so gcd of a comma b is equal to the gcd of b comma a right that bit is simple uh, let's say gcd of a comma b is equal to some quantity uh, and i'll call that quantity x right so gcd of a comma b is equal to x which means that a is divisible by gcd of a comma b right that's that's there and so is b so let's imagine a as a rectangle having blocks of x in it and b also as a rectangle which can be divided uh, into blocks once you divide it by x right if you subtract these two quantities you get c which in turn can be divided by x now if if it can be divided by x like shown here each block and is is actually x over here um how is that the case well if you take a minus b that turns out to be gcd of a comma b into some quantity p let's say right so minus gcd of a minus a comma b into q all right that's another arbitrary number so if you take these quantities it comes out to be a minus b is equal to gcd of a comma b you take a comma b common and you have p minus q in brackets so that means a minus b is in fact divisible by gcd of a comma b so now we know that c is divisible by the gcd of a comma b right and we should keep that in mind now a minus b is equal to c which tells us that the gcd of b comma c will be interesting right it divides both b and c so let's say when it is multiplied by a number m it gives you b and when multiplied by a number n gcd of b comma c gives you c also uh, instead of a minus b equal to c let's put it as c plus b is equal to a right which tells us a is equal to b plus c which is m plus n into gcd of b comma c right m and n are arbitrary integers just like p and q earlier and uh, that tells us that actually a is divisible by the gcd of b comma c so just writing that down a is divisible by the gcd of b comma c uh, from earlier of course we have c is divisible by the gcd of a comma b right and here we have some interesting points to note with these two observations we can we can start making some interesting points so finally we can make the observation that a is being divisible by both gcd of b comma c and the gcd of a comma b right but any number which divides both a and b has to be less than or equal to the gcd of a and b which means that gcd of a and b is greater than the gcd of b comma c greater than or equal to because any number which divides both a and b has to be lesser than or equal to the gcd of a comma b right that's the greatest common divisor that's why definition going to be greater than or equal to similarly we are going to make a point for uh, we are going to make a point for c in a very similar way what we are going to say is that c is divisible by both the gcd of a comma b right that's down there as point number 2 and the gcd of b comma c with this the greatest divisor for both b and c is gcd of b comma c it has to be greater than any other divisor and one of the divisors is gcd of a comma b right um this in fact tells us that this quantity is greater than gcd of a comma b the second equation and the first equation are contradicting each other except for a single point which is equality equality is the only point where these two equations are satisfying so we come to the point where we have proven that gcd of a comma b is equal to the gcd 
of b comma c right which tells us that the gcd of a comma b is equal to the definition of gcd of b into definition of c which is a minus b now just inverting uh, the two variables we have gcd of a minus b comma b right and if you apply the same procedure again and again where you're subtracting by b you get gcd of a minus 2b into b uh, comma b and gcd of a minus 3b comma b being the same thing so you go on doing this so on and so forth till a minus x into b comma b comes up where a minus x b has to be positive right so a minus x into b is equal to let's say r which is the smallest possible number uh, greater than zero greater than or rather say equal to zero so gcd of a comma b turns out to be the gcd of r comma b that in turn tells you that gcd of a comma b is equal to the gcd of b comma r of course just swapping the variables um, which is exactly what we are looking for right r is the remainder and we have euclid's algorithm effectively proven to us for me writing that down that is equal to gcd of a comma b is equal to gcd of b comma a mod b right which is r which is the remainder and that's it for proving what uh, the euclid's algorithm i mean how the euclid's algorithm works uh, let's see how we can actually work with this uh, in a programmatic way